from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello and welcome back. This is the exclusive coverage from theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the co-host. We're here in New York City for special on the ground coverage. We go out where all the action is. It's happening here in New York City for Blockchain Week, New York. Hashtag Blockchain Week NY. Of course, Consensus 2018 and a variety of other events happening all over the place. Uh, we got Decentral having a big boat event here. Tons of events from Hollywood. We got New York money. We got Hollywood money. We got nerd money. It's money everywhere. And of course, great deals are happening. And I'm here with two friends who have done a deal. Al Bergio is the CEO of Digital Bits, co-founder. And um, Ethan, who's the partner at Arcadia Crypto Ventures. You guys, we've, you know, we're like family now and you're hiding secrets from me. You did a deal. <laughs> Al, what's going on here? Some news. Yeah, well, first, John, thanks for having us. We always love coming on the show and, and uh, really enjoy um, you know, spending time with you and so forth. Um, we, uh, you know, in previous conversations that we've had, we, we were not out there fundraising, uh, but it really had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people. Um, you know, Nathan and his firm being, being definitely one of them. And, you know, as a result of that, really building this, this, say, following these relationships within the venture community, or more specifically, the crypto venture community, um, when we were ready to actually go out and do, let's say, a first round, um, for us, it happened very quickly, you know, and it was a result of being able to leverage those relationships that we had. Um, for me, it was kind of remarkable to see that support come and happen so quickly. Normally, venture, it's just a process. Yes. Yeah, many, long, many months. Long road. Then a month to close. Kiss all the frogs. Here, yeah. Here, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's, you know, people can do, do due diligence on the fly. You have an opportunity with events like They're this. They're smart. They're smart. And, and there's an opportunity to really foster these relationships yeah. in this really tight-knit community. And, uh, you know, Nathan and his firm being obviously one of those. And so when we were ready to go out and, and uh, do our first round, it happened quickly. And it, uh, I'd like to think that in a lot of ways it happened amongst you know friends. Well, you know, you're being humble, Al. We've been covering. You've been on the queue early when you just started the idea, so it's fun to watch you uh, have this idea come to fruition. But you're in a you're hitting a TAM, a total adjustable market that's pretty large, and that's one of the secrets to have a TAM. It's aggressive, bold move. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out for you, but you know you know you got to have the moonshot. You're going after the loyalty market, which is completely run by the the, the syndicate. What do you want to call it? The mafia of lo of of, of Loyalty. Yeah, well, I would say that in in some cases, um, the you know those that are supporting us see that as as really just one use case because we built this general purpose blockchain. Um, one of the use cases and one of the first use cases we're out there to support happens to be the loyalty space, it's big uh, and it's massive, yeah. highly fragmented but massive market, and we can solve a lot of the liquidity issues with our technology, but then it goes beyond that. So it's a big market at the start, and then it can scale even greater from there. And I think that's part of what, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna speak for Nithin. Nithin, but. <laughs> no, let me weigh in here, pass the mic over. Nithin, talk about uh, the deal, why Why these guys? I know you, you met him, you like Al, and the feedback I've heard from other folks is, you know, he's a classic entrepreneur, and that, you know, obviously the entrepreneur gets the deal, but obviously you don't just give money because you like someone. What, what's about this deal, what about this deal that is it that you guys like? You, have, you guys been there early, you got some great people on your team. What about this deal is it that you like? Sure, uh, for us, there are, Al met pretty much most of, almost all the criteria that we had, okay? That, we had when we go the thesis before we go fund someone we don't get so many deals like that usually we get you know they meet 50 percent of the criteria we might still put money because you can't get the 100 percent so one thing al as the founder he's experienced he's done it multiple times before he sold companies tech guy so which is very key for us uh, a tech project is very key okay second thing he's built the whole thing it's not like he's raising the money to go and build it he built it, now he's raising money to go for go-to-market strategies, which makes sense, okay? He's, he's shown it and we tested it out. So, uh, like, we were completely blown away. He has a team behind, he's built a team on every side, uh, on the marketing side, on PR, uh, events, and the, the idea, or this is a general blockchain, but he's addressing a very specific issue. It is a real pro problem. Loyalty points or rewards points or gift points or whatever you call them, 
it is segmented, it's fragmented, and this is a chance. And there might be many people who are trying to solve this problem, but I think Al has the greatest possibility or probability of becoming the winner. You and I have talked about on the queue before. Both of you guys are queue alumni. I know you both, so I'll ask you because I'll just remind everyone. We've talked about token economics. One of the things that's coming up here at the Consensus 2018 event in New York on stage, certainly, and some fireworks in one of the sessions is like, if you're not decentralized, why the hell are you doing a decentralized model? So one of the criteria is, is the fit for the business model has to fit the notion of a decentralized world with the ability of tokens becoming an integral part. What about this deal makes that happen? Obviously, fragmentation, is that still decentralized? So how are you sorting through the nuances of saying, okay, is it, is it decentralized, the market for him and this deal, how does it, or does it fit? See, no, uh, decentralized is one thing, okay? In, 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 in here, more than decentralized, I would say there was the, you know, the platform so that all the companies can come in, use this common platform, release it, and as a user, you're getting a chance to atomically swap it if you don't like something, okay? Most of the reward points or loyalty points go waste, all right? Maybe the companies want it to go waste. I don't know if that is- It's a natural case. burn in equilibrium going on anyway, right? I, that, it's a perfect that, fit. So that is the only, the, that was the only doubt that we had, okay? Would companies want this because, do they want their uh, you know, customers' loyalty points going waste rather than swapping it for something else? That was the only question that we had. Well, that is a, uh, that's a question that will get answered in the market. But otherwise, um, you know, there was, we hadn't seen something like this before. What's your take of the show so far? So we saw each other in the hallway as we were getting set up for the Cube for uh, two days of coverage uh, in New York for Blockchain Week New York. What's your take? Obviously pretty, pretty packed. Oh my God, it's so packed uh, and it's, it's, it's great, you know, the, the show is going on, okay? It is bringing a lot of money in. It's bringing all the investors in, you know, new new money, old money, traditional money, nerd money, as you said. It Hollywood. smells like money. It's, <laughs> it's, everybody's coming in. See, the, the beauty about those things coming in is you're going to get a lot of people from other fields that are going to come into this field to solve problems. Because earlier, when if there is no money coming in, you're going to have very smart people or very intelligent people stick with physics or whichever you know, whichever was their field, now they're going to look into the space because they're getting paid. See, that brings more people who are intelligent and who can solve problems. That, that is very key for me. Al, I want to ask you as an entrepreneur, one of the things you have to struggle with is, as any entrepreneur is navigating the 3D chess you've got to pay, whether it's competitive strategy, market movement, certainly the market's moving and shifting very quickly, but you've got growth. Big tailwind for you. What's your takeaway? Because now you have new things coming on every every day. It seems like a new shoe is dropping. SECs, you know, firing a warning on utility tokens. Security tokens are still coming are now coming online, but that looks very promising. And then ecosystems become super important. You guys just announced news yesterday or this morning tomorrow. around the ecosystem. Yeah, tomorrow we have some. We had some news today, but we have more tomorrow. Yeah. Um, well, talk about the news. Cause yeah. So um, <clears throat> we have a multi-tiered go-to-market strategy. Uh, obviously, in, in the loyalty space, and again, it, it, you know, I want to emphasize it's just one, one use case, but it's a massive one. Um, you have brands, the enterprise, um, and many of those those enterprises or brands uh, may operate their loyalty program internally in terms of like back office systems. In some cases, they're app, uh, outsourcing that to a SaaS provider, some application provider that's kind of hidden in the background. Um, but let's just say like Hilton. I use Hilton. That's the, the location for the for the event. But you know, Hilton, um, you you have this user experience you're using this app, but maybe that, that that technology, the SaaS application that's powering that, is actually not Hilton technology. And so let's just say there's 30 million people in the Hilton program, and then maybe 30 million on the on the Marriott coexisting on some SaaS application. And so that's another important category for us: the SaaS providers and so forth, supporting that industry. And then last but not least. Today, whether enterprise or SaaS company, they're in many cases not touching their own hardware, right? They're using the cloud. And so we so have- they're outsourcing. Yeah, like, they're also uh, so, the back end. And so you have managed cloud providers. So what does it mean for the market? I don't understand, I'm not following you. Well, I guess what I'm saying is that there needs to be a common standard across enterprise application provider in, man, in global cloud community. Cloud is the new hardware. Right. And and so- So hard uh, only scaling loyalties, that's what uh, we're thinking uh, about. Exactly. So we have- we, we're basically securing partnerships at all three levels to make sure that 
um, you know, if you want to use new technology, you want to ensure that it's widely supported across a variety of partners you may want to work with if you're an enterprise, whether software company, cloud company, and so forth. You want to be able to ensure that they can back up the truck. And so we've basically signed partnerships at all, all of these tiers. Um, you're going to see, you know, news in the morning. Uh, it's late here on a Monday evening, so tomorrow 9 a.m., um, major cloud company, one of the major cloud companies, uh, and, and there's more to follow, making an announcement that they've joined our ecosystem partner program and supporting this open source technology in a, in a number of different ways, which we're really excited you about. You see ecosystem as a strategic move for you. Absolutely. This is, for us, this is, it's all about helping the consumer, but it's not about one consumer at a time for us. It's very much an enterprise play. It's one enterprise at a time. And with each enterprise, you, uh, we basically add to the ecosystem millions, if not tens of millions, yeah. of consumers instantly. Nathan, I want to ask you a question because what he just brought up is interesting to me as well as a new thing. It's not new, but it's new to the crypto world, new to the analog world that's not in the tech field. Tech business, we all know about global system integrators. We know about ecosystems. We know the value of developer programs and community, all those things, check, check, check. Mm -hmm. But no, those, those things are coming to new markets. People have never seen an ecosystem play before. So it's sure. kind of not new, it's new in, in for some people, it's a competitive advantage opportunity. True, it is. Um, see, the whole thing is so new that you can't even define it at this point. It's very hard to define. It's, it's like, see, it, it, as an example, I would say, none of us thought that when the iPhone came, uh, there would be a $60 billion car, you know, taxi sharing economy that comes out of it, right? Same thing. Blockchain comes, we, we just don't know. And it's very hard to predict. You know. New brands aren't emerge. I mean, if you look at every major inflection point, I point to a couple uh -huh. that I think are relevant. TCP IP was created internetworking yep. that essentially went after proprietary networks like yep. IBM, digital uh -huh. stacks, but it didn't replace, it wasn't a new functionality, it was interoperability. Yes. The web, HTTP, mm -hmm. created a whole new functionality. Yep. Out of that emerged new brands. Yep. So I think this 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 wave's coming as a new brands here, are going to emerge. Here, what's the brand? I don't know what's going to emerge. There, it was interoperability. Well, new players. It's here. It's more um, inter or the collaboration. The collaboration is so huge. It's the scale is so huge in the sense you can collaborate across the world. You're cutting those borders. There are no borders that can hold you. Even though interoperability happened in internet, there were the Googles and the Facebook that still had those. Well, don't put it there. No, Cisco came out of that, 3Com and those generations, but the hyperscalers right. came out of the web. Yep. So I'm saying, I, well, I'm saying what I get your reaction to is, I think that is such a small scale relative to uh, blockchain and crypto because it's global. Mm -hmm. It's every industry. It's yep. not just tech. It's yeah. just like everything. Right. So there's got to be new brands. Uh, startups going to come out of the woodwork. That's my point. Right. No. The, see, it's not yet time for the brands to come in. See, that's the whole thing. So uh, let's let's put it this way: the internet was there from 1978. If you really look at it, ARPANET or uh, DARPA, those things were there. Email was there, but it, it was by 1997 or by the time we all came to know Google, it was 2001. Okay. There is that gap between the brand forming because it yeah. has to permeate first. More people have to use it. Like, what is the user? Yeah, but everything, everything was, everything was a bubble. But everything happened. Right. Right. It I get, I get pet it's food delivered to my house today. Right. That it's, happened. People were saying that's a crazy idea. It's but it's, it's, it's now it's going on, right? Yeah. So it's the timing and you know the time for it to permeate. So here, how many people are using Bitcoin and to do what? Most of them are just speculating, right? There's very yeah. few real use cases of remittance or speculative trading. That's what's happening. See, that's what I said. The other use cases, it has to permeate. And that comes with more user adoption. And the user adoption initially is going to come from the speculation. Yeah. I think it's a good sign. Honestly, I think it's a tell sign because I remember when the web was going, I was in, coming out right and growing in the industry was people were poo-poo. Oh, that's just for kids. The, exactly. big, the big company said, we would, who the hell is going to use the World Wide Web? Right. right. Oh, yeah. Enter the search engines. Yeah. I, I, I remember that like it was yesterday. I, I forget <laughs> that I'm not a kid anymore. And uh, you know, I had the opportunity to be an entrepreneur during that era. And uh, you know, one of the things I want to add is that you know, we had, I think what you know, Nitin is really pointing out, it started with the infrastructure, right? You had yeah. network engineers and ISPs you know, and email. But what was the enterprise application here? What was that you know, consumer application that followed? 
right? So it started infrastructure, then it evolved. Once we saw these applications, enterprises started to go crazy. Whether it was the Ubers of the world surfacing or enterprises reinventing themselves, that's kind of the next wave. Well, this wave. is why I think you're a good opportunity because I, I remember licking stamps and sending out envelopes to get people to come to a seminar uh, he held at a hotel. It was, that's how you did it in the old world. The web replaced that with direct response but there's mechanisms. But some, there's something it does, else. It, the mainframe ran faster than the web. You're replacing an old loyalty. That's like licking the stamps. It's not about comparing what you're doing to something else. There's, like also, there's also something that helps, that we're not acknowledging, that really helped you know, take internet from 1.0 to, 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 to 2.0. It's Linux. You know, I, I remember websites were insanely expensive. It was Windows servers. It was Sun Solaris, all of this crazy expensive server systems yeah. that you needed to have. So the barrier of entry was extremely high. Then Linux came along, and you still needed to have your own data center space. Yeah. And so, so it was still high, but the licensing fees kind of went away. And now with Cloud, containers and Kubernetes. Yeah, exactly. I, I made over. a bet I was going to get Kubernetes in a crypto show. Anybody so. from a bedroom can start a company, right? <laughs> you, can, you can do it with your pajamas still on. Well, orchestration and, is and easier now. Absolutely. And so this has started this really revolution. Now you have blockchain, and you start to introduce enterprise-grade blockchain technologies. Um, it's the next wave. You know, it's, it's, it's not VoIP, it's value over IP. Okay, I want to ask both of you guys a, f a final question uh, to end this uh, segment here at the Block event. I know you guys want to get back and take any away from the schmoozing and networking and the fun out there. DJ, um, predictions. Next year, this time, what are we going to be? What's the world going to look like? What's going to evolve? I mean, we had a conversation with Richard, who uh, the managing partner with you guys at Arcadia uh, Crypto Partners, saying, the trading thing's interesting, the liquidity has changed. What's your take? I want you guys both to take a minute to yeah. make a prediction. Next year, what's different? Who's out, who's in, what's happening, is it growing? Any, what's your so I, I, you know, I would say this. Um, surprisingly, um, CTOs, I, I love CTOs, but many CTOs, I would say that well above 50% of CTOs still can't spell blockchain. Really, and what I mean by that, really understand the transformational power of what this is in terms of how this is really web 3.0. This is going to change so many industries, create so much value for consumers, help businesses and so forth. And we're going to cross that 50% mark. Next uh, with, year. With CTOs. 50% can, of what? Be clear on Basically, uh, we're going, in terms of the, the, the net that blockchain is going to uh, capture and really enterprises, and not just enterprises, service providers, so fifty so percent of the mind share, or fifty percent of projects. Yeah, no, I'm gonna. I'm talking. It's it's. People aren't going to be saying, "Oh, blockchain isn't that Bitcoin." They're going to really understand. And they're going to understand that impact. And over the course of the next twelve months, we're going to see that. And it starts obviously in many cases with the CIO, CTO of many companies. There are definitely a lot of CIOs and C CTOs on the forefront of innovation that get it. But I, what I'm saying is that more than fifty percent don't. So they're you're very saying, busy in doing what they're doing today, and it hasn't hit them yet. Okay, to recap, you're saying by next year, 50% of CTOs or CTO equivalents will have a clear understanding of what blockchain is Absolutely. and what it can do. Absolutely. Within your, your, your prediction next year, this time, what's different, what's new, what's the prediction? So <clears throat> one of the key things that I think is going to happen is there's going to be a lot more training and uh, knowledge that's going to spread out so that a lot more people understand, you know, what blockchain is and what Bitcoin is. Even now, you know, as Al said, he was telling about CTOs, you know, if the CTOs are, that's the state that they can't spell blockchain, imagine where the real common man is, you know. You've got people like Jamie Dimon coming on, uh, and I'm coming on TV and saying, he doesn't like Bitcoin, but he likes blockchain. I'm like, what the heck is he saying? He likes a database? He was selling it short. Everyone yeah, he, was, he likes a database. <laughs> and then you have uh, Warren Buffett coming over there. And rat like, poison. And uh, this is rat poison. Or, and uh, I'm like, my question is, it, does any of his funds buy gold? Do they buy gold? Like, it's like he was telling that this is only worth as much as the next buy buying at a higher price. What's Warren Buffett's best tech investment? I, I, I don't know. Okay, I, I think question. he bought he, he bought Apple. Yeah, he started buy, buying Apple now, right? Yeah, uh, when it reached a thousand bucks, or it reached a trillion dollars, or close to that, or seven fifty billion. He the Apple buy was two thousand and six. Uh, if the, you were the, there, then you were good. Yeah, but he's. he's oh, so your prediction. Um, 
market-wise, I don't know where what's going to happen. I'm I am expecting this uh, the crypto, the utility token, or the crypto market to be at least a six trillion dollar business. But it'll happen next year, definitely not. But I've been proven wrong. Like I was expecting it to happen by 2025, but when it went to 750 billion by December, well. It's not too far. You did get the prediction right in, in the Bahamas at Polycon 18 about the drop around the tax consequences of the right. people you know, slinging trades around not knowing the tax consequences. Right, right. The, the, we don't know because who, who knows? Because what is going on over there is IRS is still saying it's a property. That's what the last circle is. SEC is saying it's, uh, it is all equity. And the CFTC who is saying it's commodity. So what tax do I pay? Uh, which okay, one? lightning round question because I want to have one more popped in my head. Um, the global landscape from an investor standpoint, the U.S., we know what's going on in the U.S. Okay. Accredited, SEC's thrown the uh, fire in across the uh, bowls across the bow of the boats, kind of holding people in line. How, what percentage of U.S. big investors will be overseas by next year? Percentage of having what? Meaning having deals being done proxy deals being done outside the US what percentage it's still going to be low though that that is going to be low because um, that I don't think the US investor means the large scale of those investors would you don't think the big to... funds will co-locate outside the US there will be some but Put not a number, enough percentage yeah not percentage wise I think it's still going to be less than 10 percent okay Al your prediction in terms of investment investment outside co investors saying hey I got money here I want to put it out there um, outside of the United yeah. States, so no, share money, not move their whole fund, but like yeah, yeah, do yeah. deals from a vehicle, do deals outside. I, I mean, I, I think I agree with Nathan. Are we throwing and, and darts I, at the board here? No, I, I so there's. I want to clarify. There's definitely massive investment happening overseas. In some respects, probably bigger than the United States. So that's not going away. If anything, that's going to grow. But your question is, you know, how many in terms of U.S. entities making abroad investments? Overseas investments versus just domestic, you know. I think you know that trend doesn't necessarily change. You have the venture community. Mm -hmm. There are certain bigger venture funds that can have global operations because at the end of the day, they need to have global operations to be able to do that. And most venture funds aren't that massive. They don't have that infrastructure, so they're going to focus on their own backyard. So I don't. I don't necessarily think blockchain changes the venture mindset. Um, it's just easier for them logistically to do due diligence in the backyard and invest in those Guys, things. always a pleasure. Great to see you. you guys are like uh, friends with the entourage here. Great to get the update um, here at Blockchain Week. We get the Silicon Valley Week. We'll, we'll connect up again. I'm John Furrier here in New York. The Cube's continuing coverage of crypto, decentralized applications, and blockchain, of course. We're all over it. You'll see us all over the, all over the web, all the shows. Thanks for watching.